I'm Scott Allen-Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. Today we are out in Playa Tesoro, and we're getting a chance to look at a number of houses and a beach that we never really get to show you. For those who don't know, Playa Tesoro is just south of Salinas Grandes in Departamento Leon here in western Nicaragua. It's absolutely beautiful. It's very pristine and tranquilo. We're far away from the city. We're far away from the big roads. It's going to be something a little bit different for you guys, and we have an interview for you as well today. We're going to get you a bunch of information about this particular area because this is something you can't easily find online, and it's uh, newly available. So it's going to be very interesting, I think, and, some, and I like that it's very different. So we have a whole different format for you today. Join me right after the bump. So we're out at Playa Tesoro today and we're going to do an interview in just a little bit. We drove out from Leon this morning and uh, we have a tight schedule so we didn't get to spend anywhere near as much time out here as we wanted today. We're promised we're gonna come back in the future and do some like adventure stuff out here. Today we just came out for an interview to get an overview of the area because uh, I've never been out here. I've done Salinas Grandes on the show but uh, have never done Tesoro, and this is not a very well-known area. Even Nicaraguans are often like, where? What are you talking about? I have no idea where that is. So this was uh, really cool to come out and explore and find out what we have out here and uh, some really cool people doing some really interesting stuff here. And uh, so I actually get to do an interview today. I, this is cool because we really never get to do this. I don't know why we never get to do this. It just doesn't come up that much that there's something uh, so interesting to do and something brand new. We have a number of uh, properties and homes that are now uh, officially listed and able to be sold in a more straightforward manner. So I learned a lot about this place and just behind me as I'm, well, in front of me, I guess, as I walk by, I've got the beautiful ocean on one side and this is the Playa Tesoro restaurant on this side, obviously very small. This is a very small, quiet community far away from all the, <laughs> all the normal things that we see in Nicaragua. So uh, we're about 50 minutes, maybe a little touch more away from Leon uh, and we're on dirt roads, but we got some great footage, I think, of the highway coming out here. Uh, but before we go too far and just have me ramble on, we got uh, a really good interview with Jeff, uh, who has been developing this for 21 years and has a great story uh, to tell us. So just real quickly, we're gonna show some of the houses here behind me. And this is off in the distance. I don't know if you can actually see it. With the naked eye, you can see pretty well the structures out at Porto Sandino which is a really major uh, port town that we have shown on the show previously, but it's been some time uh, hanging out there in the distance. So you can see the, there's some big buildings out there and stuff because that is a big settlement, but it's off in the distance. It's in the mist and we got some big ships out at the sea. This is a neat spot. And I'm really excited to be here because I've never seen this part of Nicaragua. I've been pretty close, but this is completely different than the neighboring beaches. So without further ado, we're going to get into the interview and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. All right, we are here in Playa Tesoro with Jeff Bramwell. And uh, thanks so much for having us out. This is great. We've been trying to arrange this for, I don't know, six months or something. So I just, I end up, I'm busy and it's difficult to get places. And uh, we're just going to excuse right now. It's very windy out here. We're on lavaliers, but we're trying our best uh, to keep the audio good for you guys. But uh, it is a beautiful warm day out here in southern Salinas Grandes. So for those who are not keenly aware with uh, Nicaraguan geography. This is in the Departamento Leon uh, in the western part of the country. Obviously, in, we're going to show you the beach, which we're looking at right behind our cameras, but we wanted to be able to show the house and we wanted some good light here. So we're, we're kind of putting one of the properties behind us, but we are south of the major beaches at Ponaloya and Las Benitas, uh, and uh, then even south of Salinas Grandes, which is the next, next beach south of those, but we're north of Porto Sandino and uh, Valero and those beaches, which are on the big loop, which you've seen on the channel previously. So this is the, the kind of hidden beach uh, connected to Salinas Grandes that we have not managed to show previously. I think this is the most major beach in Departamento Leon that has not yet been on the channel. That was a lot of a lot of very specific. <laughs> no, it's things, very but. true. It, it's it's it, it's amazing that for 21 years we've been working here almost nobody knows that this beach even exists. Nicaraguans themselves, when I tell them all the time on the plane and whatnot where it is, they're like, there's nothing there. Well, no, no, there's five miles <laughs> of beautiful beach with beautiful water. No, there isn't. I was like, yes, there is. Look on the map. It's between, it's between Las Benitas and Puerto Sandino. And I'm like, wow, they, ha they have no idea. 
Yeah, and there's only one access road coming down here. As you drive down the highway, it's 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 very visible, but it's not like you're coming down the highway and there's like a big sign. It's like come this way. It's like you notice a little bit of a turn off. It's not even in well, it's an intersection, but it's uh it's an Empalma. It just goes off in one way, and uh you know there's a little sign Salinas Grandes this way. So if you're looking for that, you know about where to expect it. You're okay. We're trying to change that. Yes. <laughs> We're trying to change it. We, 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 we just designed a new sign on the highway. Nice. It's going up next week. We just we did one actually yesterday, a small one. And we've done 39 more signs this week for more directional signs and, and property for sale signs. So we were trying yeah. to change that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, most people have no idea about that turnoff. Yeah, you have these new tombstones. Like they're, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the little uh, stone signs that are, that are kind of low, but as you come off from Salinas Grande's main road, uh, they kind of point uh, to sort of this way, turn here, turn here, because as you come down, it's easy to be like, did I miss it? Did I? Yeah, we've lost yeah. a lot. We've lost a lot of oh, clients, like uh, rental Airbnb clients. When we've lost plenty over the years, just missing the turn off. So that's why we've been putting more and more, more of those signs out there. But from this point forward, it's like, I think we were, we we're going to have uh, about 20 directional signs out there. So every single <laughs> intersection has a sign with an arrow and a distance on it now. That's good. That's good because it's <laughs> it is confusing. And I've been out here close by recently, and just like I I know it's there, but having not been here, it really is. It's it's kind of nerve wracking. So that's great. So I'm really excited. This is really cool. And I, I want to point out. Hopefully, we're gonna have a shot of this. But there are uh, like container ships, or it's actually fuel ships sitting offshore. So up in Las Vegas, where I show quite often on the on the show, uh, we get container ships heading into Corinto. Um, often they're coming from, this is really cool, right? Living on the ocean, I love it. They come from Panama and they're heading up to Corinto to offload, which is the ones we see. They come from other places to Corinto, but we only see the ones coming from Panama because they, they transit in front of us. But here you're actually within sight of the offload port for the fuel for the whole country. Yeah. And yeah. so they actually sit offshore and it's right there. Like you can really yeah. see it. That's kind of a cool well, view. It's, it's neat. In the evening and at night, you, you always see boats moving across the horizon back. Well, basically towards Panama. There's also a, uh, a langosta, a lobster export business in the, in, the, in, the, in the estuary down there, about four kilometers. Oh. So they're, they're shipping out from there too, but those are small boats. But, but the big ones is, is really nice at night. You, at night, you see the boats across the horizon and it's amazing how many containers. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. remarkable, like 24 seven, 365 days, every, like they're, they're like this far apart, <laughs> endlessly. It's just yeah. endless. It's yeah, amazing. it's. I think we also see them heading to El Salvador here. Oh, really? So, yeah, I think yeah. it's a mix. I don't think we get all of them, but, but you know, we're a good-sized country, and we only have the one container port right now yeah. that, of, of any size because we, we have a new one coming. Um, I'm, I assume you know. We talk about it on the channel a bit. Uh, Bluefields is dredging. Oh, right. And they're yeah. going to be putting in, we hope, in the, in the reasonable future, um, a new container port, and that's going to be that's gonna be a big deal, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But right now, Corinto, which is only a few beaches away, uh, is the big port and um, highly recommend. If anyone's flying in or look at a map and get an idea of what Corinto should look like, because when you fly over, it is the number one, mo if, if you fly at night, most identifiable thing in the country. You, like, you can be anywhere and you're like, I don't know, is that Leon? Is that Chinandega? Is that, oh, there's Corinto. It is twice as bright as anything else and it's this a tiny line, a thread of lights, and then this bright thing hanging out in the ocean. Yeah, you can you can really find, it. and then you can see the dots of the container ships. But okay, so uh, easy to get distracted. We have uh, a really interesting story, I think, of, of you is. and your brother yeah. and and the 21 years of, of yeah. putting in a development here. So can you yeah. tell us about like some of your history? Yeah. What brought you here? Like, well, you didn't. We haven't talked about this at all. What kind of brought you to Nicaragua in the first place 21 years ago or more, and and this particular part of Nicaragua? Well, uh, we're from Vancouver, and the Vancouver is a, is a movie hub. So I, I, you know, I've met directors and a number of directors. And when I just start giving my maybe giving twenty five percent of our story, they say, "Stop, stop, 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 stop. You're not talking about a movie. You're talking about you've already done five seasons of an HBO special, like, and you're only a quarter into the story. <laughs> our story is remarkable. So uh, we haven't told the story." because we've been waiting for, for now 20 years to get it to the point where we are now, where it's a success. The titles are in order, we're ready to go, we're ready to sell, we're ready to, we're ready to explode. But prior to that, it's been preparation for, it'll be 21 years this, this August. So our story in simple terms is in 2003, I had a, we had, I worked with my brother 
and we had uh, a bunch of homes in Whistler. The Olympics were coming, prices went up a lot. We decided, well, I decided for myself to sell, sell all the stuff because the prices were higher before the Olympics, gather up all the money and try and get ahead of the baby boomers instead of being behind them all the time. So I was like, okay, I'm the very last year of the baby boomers. So where are they going now? They don't want to freeze to death anymore. They want to go somewhere warm. So let's get out in front of them this time. So I ended up shopping around different beaches, Hawaii, California, Panama, Costa Rica, all over. And I ended up here and I bought one lot. And I went home and some friends came over for dinner and they said, what'd you do this week? And I said, well, I went to Nicaragua. I bought this lot on a beautiful beach with a surf break and I'm going to do nothing for 15 years. And when I'm 50, I'm going to go back there and I'm going to build a little house and I'm just going to sit around and drink rum and smoke a little marijuana. And that's it. That's my plan. The, the, the room went silent. <laughs> and my wife started doing, yep. Like everybody's looking at her, was like, this guy telling the truth? And, and, she, and they're all looking at her and she's like, yeah, he's freaking <laughs> out there. And so then they said, tell me more. So uh, there, was a, there was a bunch of people in the room, like professionals. And I told them some more. Actually, one guy said, one guy actually said, what? You went to Africa and bought a building lot? Are you freaking crazy? And I was like, no, dude, not, not Nigeria. Nicaragua. And he's like, whoa, where's that? I said, it's between Mexico and Costa Rica. So that's when it started. And then, and then he said, by the end of the dinner, he was like, how much? I said, for what? How much for a lot right beside you? I'm in. I said, uh, I don't know. Same as I paid 30 grand. He goes, okay, Chuck will be on the desk. Come by the office next week. The Chuck will be there. Let's do it. I was like, are you serious? He's like, yes, I'm serious. And then another guy on the other table said, Look, give me a week, give me a week, I'll talk to my wife, I'll get back to you. Sure enough, two weeks later, <laughs> checks on the desk. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not the only guy who's like 38 years old, who's been killing himself for his whole life, working like a maniac, and, and can't stand the pressure, and just wants to have an exit plan. There's a lot of, there's a lot of us. So then we started buying more. Awesome, yeah. well that's really cool. That's not entirely, not unlike kind of our story, um, right about that same year, just a year or two later, uh, my wife and I were talking about where we wanted to potentially move. We had been looking at, um, you know, future retirement, kind of living abroad, kind of just life adventure, kind of so similar, but a little bit different. And, and Nicaragua had hit our radar because of some random House Hunters International episode that we right. watched. And we were just like, that. We were like, wow, that's not what I pictured of Nicaragua. And it just, you know, I think we had pictured nothing, right? As, as most Americans do, you're just kind of like, I, I don't know. I, I knew no where idea. it was. I knew exactly where it was, just to be yeah. clear. But I didn't, I didn't have a really strong picture. I had uh, one of my best friends uh, when I was young. His parents had lived in Guatemala for a while. So I had, like, some amount of connection to Central America where, like, I, I had a little bit of an idea. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I had taken Latin American studies in, in high school. So that really push like here's the different countries here's what they're like and, and and that was useful but it really didn't give me a very like you just even years of research before i moved here it's really hard to picture oh it is nicaragua it is. like you get and that's one of the reasons like i do this channel is because i kept uh, my company had offices here but only a few people and i have people in in other countries and we kept saying so this is our preferred location anyone who wants to work in nicaragua will move you right that's just an open offer to all of our other offices this is our core office and, and people would be like, well, I could talk about it, but what do I show my wife? What do I show my husband? How do I have a conversation with my family about this? I can't find anything. And I did find a few resources, but there were very few, and then they disappeared, as they often do. There's been uh, a major show this just this year disappeared. They pulled all their videos. No idea what happened. Just everything's gone. So finding, like, what does Matagalpa look like? Yeah. Very yeah. hard. And yeah. to Soro, like, yeah. how do you find a video here? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, it's very difficult to get information. That's why I think you're doing a great job. Like well, honestly, I think you're doing the, 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 the YouTube channel and the work you're doing, I think it's fantastic because you're giving people the truth and some people hate hate what you say and some <laughs> people say, you know, well, it's just the truth. But it simply, it seems from what I can see, you're just telling the truth. Well, thank yeah. you. Yes, that's where we really just want to share the country. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's there's so much value, I think, here. Just, just in knowing, if you know what it's like, right, you can make a good evaluation. And for those of us who live here, like, like we're vested, you yeah, know, this right. is, this is our home. This is, so we want people to come in and we want them to be successful, but we also want, 
I don't mean this the way it sounds, but we want the right people. Meaning the people who are going to come and then not be upset that they came, but no. people who are going to come and be like, this was right. I got it right. Yeah. Yep. I knew, you know, because... You have to manage the expectation. Right, right, exactly. Really That's do. what I'm looking for. Yeah. People who are yeah. who are a right fit, for yeah. the, and that it's a right fit for them, um, because I've met so many people who are like, oh, I came, I gave it a few years, I expected something completely different, and then it's just not a great scenario to have people leaving in that they're, they're unhappy. I mean, some people are just like, ah, I gave it a shot, cool. I moved on to another place, it's cool. So sometimes yeah, you get yeah, good, but yeah. often it just even, ends up Even being... shorter term, people who come for even like two weeks or uh -huh. three weeks or four weeks, you have to sort of manage the expectation. It's not Costa Rica, it's not Mexico, right. you know, it's not Colombia. It's different. It's got it's a, it's, it's, and it's got a vibe and it's got an energy that's is really really wonderful. But you have to. Uh, that has to be what you want. Yes, it's unique. It definitely yeah. is. And that's people ask me all the time, why'd you pick Nicaragua? And I and and they'll often say versus something, and that's legit. Like obviously you have to compare it to other things. But they'll. It's often like and someone said it just recently uh, versus Costa Rica. And I'm like, wow, I would never have picked that. As a comparison yeah. country, that's like so far from Nicaragua as a yeah. as a comparison. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, that wasn't on my radar, but all these others were, <laughs> like Spain. Um, so it's yeah, it's it's very unique, and and I don't think. Yeah, I think like of... the, the one I hear the one versus Costa Rica a lot, but you know what? My answer is always the same. It's like, look, it's just completely different. So why don't I just explain to you what it is? <laughs> right. You know, so what? Because it's really, it's just completely different. It's yeah. it's a very tranquilo place. It's, it's a very calm place. It's a very safe place, like incredibly safe, personal security wise. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the legal system is, is really difficult to understand <laughs> and how it functions and how things work yep. here. But I, in my experience, uh, when you try, and, uh, like I went to, I, I, I've got a master's from, from a business school in Canada. So I, what I always loved about this place is you come with your expectations from North America, a way, the way that business functions, and then you come to this place and it's like <laughs> over here and then so you have a problem and then you spend like years negotiating <laughs> how to bring it together mm -hmm. and you get these hybrid solutions to move the thing forward <laughs> you could never possibly imagine yes that you would end up there and it's it's a, that's what i find fascinating about this place for sure yeah i i often say that in nicaragua almost everything's a conversation yeah. like what am i allowed to do what should i do what's good to do what will people be happy with well, often it's a negotiation sit yeah. down and if yeah. someone says you know, it, coming from the U.S., right? If, if an authority figure says, you're not allowed to do this, the conversation ends there. But in Nicaragua, you're not allowed to do this is, okay, but what if I change something? What yeah. if I, what, what if do we you talk propose? About right, yeah. yes. So what, what do you propose? And sometimes it's the silliest <laughs> things that are like, oh, you could never do that. Oh, but what if I did it on a Friday? Oh, well, of course it's okay on a Friday. And you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> what did you yeah. say? Like the yeah. funniest, so it's yeah. it's often so so simple, but. Canada, like the U.S., is a, is a common law country. And that gives us like a framework for understanding law that to us is just normal. And when you come to a civil law country, which to them it's normal, and to us it's like, how does this function? Um, and, and they say the same thing about us, of course. Uh, but that's, to me as a business person, that's my biggest, I'm not used to this, because I've done business like you decades in the United States and, and, in, and in Canada. Um, and, and it's just always surprising. And now I do business in Belize as well. I met, awesome. I met a guy. I met a guy in Houston uh -huh. who was uh, who was in oil, the oil business, and he was he was successful. And he was senior, and he done he done oil things all over the world. And I remember having this conversation with him about 17 years ago because uh -huh. I went I was on the way home and I was like I just can't understand how this legal system works there, right? And he sat me down and said, Here, this is what you're not catching. He was a great guy. This is what you don't understand. It's it's Napoleonic law. Exactly. Okay. In Napoleonic yep. law, it's the complete reverse of civil law. You start with civil law, uh, uh, everything's allowed until it hurts somebody, or and then we make a law that you can't do that. That's common law. That's what we're used to. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you want until someone gets hurt, then we make a law, don't do that. Right. They're completely opposite. Napoleon sat down and wrote down everything you're, not, you're allowed to do, and if it's not one of these things, you need a permit. Go get a permit. Mm -hmm. So he said to me, you're always waiting for a permit, right? I said, yeah, I have like so many permit applications in <laughs> at all times. He goes, yeah, because, because that's how they're thinking, right? But if you go in with a proposal, then that's how you get things done. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. for me, that was a turning point.
That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so much is a little bit. And that's one of the reasons why we say so often come down and spend some time before you make like big decisions, before you try to do complex things, yeah. because a little bit of time, you know, months, maybe a year, and, and you'll, you'll interface with some of these things and encounter some of these problems and you'll get frustrated and then you'll be like, oh, I have to think about it in this different way. And suddenly it's okay. This isn't a big deal next time. No, I just, no. I just, I had to think about it differently and they don't know what my expectation is. No one's sitting around going, this is what Canadians think is going to happen. So tell them this and they'll understand. They have no idea what we're coming from in most cases. Yeah. And so yeah. they, they can't help us. Yeah. Part of the, part of the, part of the, uh, part of my attraction to Lyon is I love Lyon. I think Lyon is the, is the, is the best city, not only Nicaragua, but the whole Latin, the whole Latin thing. I love Lyon. I love the people. They're wonderful. But, but in the last few years, I'm getting more and more into uh, how the relationships work amongst people in Lyon mm -hmm. and how they work with each other or don't or how. Uh, and it's fascinating. It's so different from the way we function. Oh, yes. And I find it absolutely amazing to listen to how their family operates, their brothers, sisters, grandparents, and how it's all functioning. It's, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Like it's yeah. so, it's lovely. Well, and the yeah. government as well, right? Yeah. Like, so this just came up and we, we've had a bit of this in, in recent times that uh, people were asking for very American or Canadian things. I want to know something about the government, like rules or policies or procedures. Like, where's the website? Where's the link? Where's the, there's like this expectation and it, of course, that makes the sense. The website right? has been updated in like two years. If there even it's all is wrong. One, right? Yeah. 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 Like that's yeah. no one. Like if you ask them, they'll be like, "We have a website." They don't know. Yeah. To be fair, someone said something about my website, and I said I have a website, and then it turned out one of my interns was like putting and half put something up, and I'm like, "Oh, so I feel." But the. But in fairness, for the government website, <laughs> right. you expect it to be you, okay. Current. Yes. There, and, there's you, a certain you, expectation. There, there is not. But yeah, exactly. And so, so you go to a, a relatively experienced local, like a lawyer or someone who really knows what they're doing, and you're like, I have this question. And they're like, oh yeah. And they either call someone or walk to the place and just walk into the office and go ask the, the person. And they're like, yeah, here's the answer. And you're like, okay, that is actually a, a simple process. I realize that a website would be easier, but it's not a hard process and it's not a no. weird process. And if you think about like 1920, or 1940, yeah. what would you, oh, it just hasn't changed since then. No. We changed, but they didn't, and that's the only thing. That's a good point. And so, yeah, so this really simple, like, oh, and once you know that, yeah. so many things get easier. Yeah. Really want to talk about what you physically actually have here. Oh. So, we're, yes, we don't yeah. want yeah. to uh, skip over um, what we have on the beach. So, so tell us about the beach. Tell us about the kind of physical properties and what's going on here. Yeah, like I mean, when I start telling people my story, they often say, hey, "Man, you should you should be famous," and it's like, well, one day maybe we will be, maybe we will write it down. But what we what we what my brother and I, my brother's name is John, and we've been working together for 40 years, and uh, we have a few businesses in Vancouver, construction and some property development stuff, and we bought this uh, we bought this in sections 20 years ago. But in the end, what we have now is over 200 acres from uh, ocean to river, three kilometers of private beach, uh, and private services. We, we, we built the, the, we put in 176 power poles and all the equipment on it. It cost half a million dollars. We put in our private water system. Our, our water supply is 17 kilometers away. There's an underground pipeline under the road. That took us four years and almost, almost another 400,000. It's private, only for us. And then we've, uh, we've bowed our way through to get this land to be equivalent to America. A fee simple, they call it diviso in this country. So we, we believe at this point today, we have the largest piece in the country that is true beachfront, completely ready to build, uh, like as, as strong a title as America and ready to go. And this is only as of like the last two weeks, we finally finished this process. We have spent a tremendous amount of money out here, but we have sold about 70 lots. We have 16 houses. We have five swimming pools. We do VRBO, Airbnb. We have our own website called tesorovacations.com where you can just, just like Airbnb, put in your dates and you come stay. If you want to have, have a look, please come have a look. And then we have, uh, you know, I just handed over four homes for sale and about 25 lots, but we have lots more. So what we're trying to do is we have great relations with all our neighbors. 
and we all work together with the community here, and we're trying to create an area of Nicaragua that has been overlooked and has been like really just destitute in poverty forever. And we're trying to create an economy here with, with some in industry and some infrastructure. This is not a place you come and you go to the bar and you do shooters and there's loud music. We don't have that. <laughs> this is a place where you, it's just tranquilo, but people come here and really appreciate the, the beauty that is here. But you have all that just, just, down, the, just down the road at Lyon. Right, yeah, you can go to Lyon for that. And, and I was gonna say, this is absolutely the opposite of Las Penitas, right? Where we've got Tuesday, Booze Day, We've got buses going out with hundreds of people for the, the Tuesday night rave and all that stuff like that. That's us. It's nice that we have that. And that's only one beach away. Well, two, really. Yeah. And uh, this is so completely a different experience. This is just wide. We're going to show this, but it's wide open, kind of grassy up to the sandy beach and, and open ocean and open breeze, which is really killing the microphones. But this is uh, this is beautiful. And yeah, tran tranquilo is this. This is chill. Just yeah, and a lot of people really appreciate it. We discourage fencing. Like w what we've done is we we've secured the perimeter. I've done about I think we've done about nine kilometers of fencing. I saw that to, as to we secure, drove in. Yeah, yeah. We, we we've I don't know something like two and a half thousand fence posts or something. We've been fencing for years, and what we're doing is trying to create a, a, not a not an isolated community, like not a not a secured community. What we're trying to do is is secure the perimeter of our property so that nobody here feels they need to fence. They don't need their own cuidador, like their own security guard. We have our, our, our the guys that patrol the whole thing. Although we don't really need security at all because we're friends with everybody. But, but so people really like the fact that we're discouraging fencing. We have fencing on the beach in the back. That's because the, the cows and the horses come in and eat all our coconut trees. And we're fighting off the bunny rabbits right now. But, but for the bigger animals, we need the fencing because they come and eat everything. But, but, but in terms of uh, side fencing, Almost nobody is doing it, and people really appreciate it here because you don't get the block walls with the barbed wire and all that. No. Yeah, 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 that's definitely unique. Yeah, this is, feels unique. I've been, yeah. I've been obviously all over the coast uh, for for a decade, and this this is a open area that we don't see other places. All right, Jeff, I'm going to act like we didn't prep this at all, and I'll be surprised that so you have Airbnb type accommodations like short term furnished rentals that people could potentially get here in Tesoro. Yeah, yeah. The, the road upgrades have going really, really well over the last three years. So that was one primary issue when people from Lyon were looking for short-term or monthly accommodation. Let's say uh, the problem was that the road was in, it wasn't in greatest condition to get in and out for coffee. That is that has changed. So just to be clear, we're, we we filmed a bit of the road. This is the upgraded road that we showed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know everything in everything in moderation. Everything takes time. But we 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 been. We've been working on the road as steadily. So you can rent, uh, uh, we have a tesorovacations.com is our private version of Airbnb. So you can key in your, your, your number of people and your dates and it'll give you your options. We have seven homes that are available for rental. And you, if you go to tesorovacations.com, it'll give you your options for your dates. We also run VRBO and Airbnb. So if you, um, we're not that high in the rankings. So you, if you, you might have to type in Playa Tesoro because we haven't really been working on the Airbnb listing. So you might have to like dig a little to find us. But we are there. We're happy to have you for a night, two nights, a week, a month, six months, a year. We're good. And you can, you can test it out. And uh, it's nice in the last nine months, let's say, because like, for instance, if I, if I, if I want a really good burger at Moncho's in Lyon, which is exactly this happened three nights ago. I was okay. like, they have the best blue cheeseburger. I mean, it is the best burger I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I've had three of these burgers in the last 10 days. They are so good. So I ha all of a sudden had a craving. So like, I'm going to Moncho's. I'm going to call a buddy. I have a beer and a burger. So, you know, within 50 minutes, I'm sitting having a beer and a burger with him. And so that is possible now uh, where that was used to be more difficult. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. And I've heard from a number of people in Salinas Grandes that when they bought, say, five years ago, 10 years ago, that they, they had a really tough time getting there. And now they're like, now it's no problem. For those who have watched my channel, we did a drive into Salinas Grandes uh, last year, almost exactly a year ago. And um, it was pretty rough in, yeah. uh, in a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it comes in, in, in phases. And part of that is that um, we, we have a number of people here who are very high in, uh, in MIDI, the Ministry of Transport and whatever. They take care of the road and the infrastructure. So they are always, 
uh, we're always working together to get money allocated to our road. But we can, we're competing with the baseball stadium in Lyon, which we, yeah. we used to be, our, our road paving used to be ahead of the baseball stadium. Baseball <laughs> stadium got ahead of us. They finished that this year, Christmas it's almost this year. Done. Yeah, it's almost done. It's not quite yeah. done, yeah. but we've been showing it. We're excited. Yeah, they're saying December, December this year, so another seven months, it'll be open. And then we got pushed back by the hospital in Lyon, uh, our road paving, that is. Uh, they push us, so that's another, they're talking about Christmas 2025 is what I understand. So then they guarantee that our road will get paved. So, but in the meantime, we have put in, uh, we have, we've put in like protests and official protests saying, come on, help us, please help us. And they have, to their credit, mm -hmm. they have come out, I'd say they spent about four, 500,000 ish in the last year working on a road. We, we are always spending money out there. And the group of foreigners out here, which numbers about 210, I'd say now. We're all throwing money in the pot every year, and we go out and keep fixing our roads. So it, it is it is getting a lot better. Good. Well, that's good to hear. And the, and you're also competing against El Transito. Yep. Because they're, for those who don't know, the the, the big beach loop road, which is a much larger beach community uh, of four or five major beaches within sight almost down here. Um, the loop is nearly finished, and so it goes from Porto Sandino and then loops around Valero and some other beaches. And then El Transito is the southernmost one. And you can't quite get to El Transito from either direction on a paved road. And it's a really populated beach. So I'm yeah. imagining they're going to get ahead of you as well. Yeah, well, it's a budgeting exercise for every government, right? And, and you know, and they're doing a lot of road work, like oh, in San Juan, and Carrazo and stuff. There's a lot of road work going on in this country. So, yeah, you're always competing. And we're always putting in a protest. And we keep trying to move up, move up the, you know, and other people try and get in so we do what we can but it, it is it is it is still like it, it's quite funny because in canadian terms that road is excellent <laughs> like if you're if you're from the midwest or you're from the prairies they laugh and say man your road is like triple a five it's what are you talking about bad you should see our roads <laughs> right so yeah, yeah here there's actually no potholes it's just yeah. kind of yeah. slippery and stuff yeah. yeah and a little bit bouncy yeah. yeah it's really not that bad yeah honestly growing up in new york the road I grew up on is like this. So, yeah. So for us, like up, bad. up in like in British Columbia, whatnot, this this would be this would be a mainline forestry logging road, which is like a really well gro groomed, hard. Uh, you know, the graders gone up and down steadily. There's no potholes. You're doing a solid 50, like you know, 28 to 35 miles per hour, and, and without a concern. That's what we have now. And for me, that's like, it's a really good road. From if you have I a know. truck, if you yeah. have a truck, yeah, yeah, the, I think the thing that that kind of puts it over a line is that if you have a small car, if you have a taxi, you have a you have a Varus, you have what, is that the right name? Well, you yeah. have one of those um, Yaris, Yaris, yeah. uh, one of those really small uh, vehicles that are common here. The road is a little bit rough on it, uh, yeah, but absolutely. if you have a Hilux or something, it's, yeah. yeah, it's not absolutely. A, I drove up from San Juan del Sur la, la, last night, yeah. yesterday, and we drove the. Not through, not through Managua, through uh, uh, Dorimba and oh, you took Nandami. It. Yeah, and you came is, up uh, the new uh, Nicaragua 169 Managua bypass. Yeah, it was a very nice road. Oh, that's a fantastic it road. It was a very nice road. Yes. And I, was, and, and I came out of uh, Playa Madeiras, and, and that road was no different than our road. And then, yeah. but then we hit, we hit San Juan del Sur. I understand when people, it's, like, that's paved all the way. It's a, nice, it's a nice paved road. So, yes, this is not as good as that. True. Okay. <laughs> Right, yeah, they're they're the same as as Las Penitas that we have a, a fully paved. I live on the Punaloya Road, and yeah. it's very nice, high quality highway, but we're a lot of traffic, like yeah. tons. Um, so okay, so uh, this is important. You mentioned the Airbnb or the the long term rentals or kind of the, the the furnished rentals. And for my audience, I mean a lot of people, but my audience especially, this is the number one thing that people ask for information on. And I didn't know you had this until we were talking this morning. Um, that that these actually exist out here because people are constantly asking me for Leon area now to be fair we're not in Leon we are in the departmento but we are not in the city so like you said you're 45 50 minutes out of the city but if that's you know a lot of people are looking for a, a tranquilo laid back kind of thing but don't want to be too far from Leon or whatever this does fit into a potential spot where people who are looking for either a vacation spot or they're specifically looking here obviously um, or if they're making it part of a loop, because uh, a number of people, uh, my channel has a very, I, they'll write in, I'm sure, there, there's a very high likelihood of people in my channel wanting to 
do short-term rentals in the one to two month range in multiple places around the country to do a survey of like, oh, what's it like here? What's it like there? Um, and so this this could fit really well into yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it could because um, to, to understand the beauty of the city of Lyon, you have to stay for a while and you have to make some relationships and you have to try and work on your Spanish and try and meet some people. And then you'll see the beauty of the culture. It's, 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 like, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. Like there is virtually nothing to be afraid of. You can wander just about anywhere and nobody will ever hurt you or, or say anything bad. Like they, they just wave and say, good day. Uh, that's all you ever get. And you have to start dropping all your fears that you brought with you because if, if, if there's anything going to happen, you brought it with you because it's not here. And, uh, and it, takes you, it takes time for you to understand that. So, um, so if, you, if you spend some time here and you spend some time in Lyon, that's what I would recommend, mm -hmm. and just get a feel for, hey, like this is, a, this is a really calm, peaceful place and maybe I could see myself being here for two or three months a year like I am and love it. Uh, but I also really want to, like I went to the theater the other day in Lyon, which I've never been in that building, and it was a folk dance thing, uh -huh. and it was fantastic. Oh, the, the Dario Theater down near um, yeah, the, Mijunas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Municipal, yes. they call it the municipal Theater, yeah. Like, it was great. It was wonderful. Like, and I was hanging with all the locals and stuff, and my mm -hmm. Spanish is not good. <laughs> and uh, in fact, it's terrible. But, um, but it's, it's, it, you need to spend some time here to really understand what a nice place it is. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So that's awesome. Well, okay, so we have a pretty by the book example uh, home behind us. Yeah. You wanna tell us about that? Because we are gonna yeah. go in and, and look at some, so give us a, a kind of overview. Yeah, this this home is my brother's home. Uh, we call it Casa Rojo. So my Does brother- over here? Sorry? Uh, yeah, 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 he knows. <laughs> okay. Uh, my house is the blue house down there, and sometimes we rent them, sometimes we don't, and then the other houses are exactly the same. So we have, I think we have eight houses that are exactly the same, and uh, some have pools and some don't. They're between 100 and 120-ish a night or so, and uh, you'll see this one later on. And this is just a standard two-bedroom, bathroom in the middle, a kitchen. They're, they're nothing special, but they really function well, and they have AC and they're comfortable. And then we have a few what we call cabanas, which are wood structures, which are very foreign for Nicaraguans, it seems, but for us up in up in British Columbia, everybody's got a, a wood shed out in the, uh -huh. out in the forest. Like, like right? a lake house, kind yeah. of, yeah. yeah. So us, they're like normal, but for Nicaraguans, they're very different because they're not concrete. But uh, but they're very nice, and they're usually, we set them at elevation because they have a very nice wind here. So they don't have air conditioning, whereas the concrete ones do. But So we put them at elevation a little bit, so you get a nice breeze going across, and it's very pleasant. I, I'm very happy sleeping in those as well. and. Um, those are like twenty to forty dollars a night or something, okay. around that range. So, yeah. and I've I've seen some of them from the outside. I would say they look like what Nicaraguans would actually be used to, but on the Caribbean coast. Right. So not yeah. not yeah. completely, yeah. you know, foreign. Just uh, it's amazing how much though Nicaraguans on the Pacific coast and the Caribbean coast don't actually ever see the other coast. No, so that's the funny you raise because our staff is uh, from the Caribbean, so English is a native language in the, in the, in the Caribbean. Yes. So they get English and Spanish, but English is their first tongue. So uh, it's easier for us, because for me anyways, but, um, but they're very different. And they, they, once again, they have a different culture and it's really interesting to understand how they see the world. But this is really quite different than the, the Spanish oh, descendants absolutely. over here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I work in Belize. And so when I'm in Belize, they're like, because some people, uh, there's actually some, you know, regular migration between like Bluefields and Belize, because that's actually one region. Um, yeah. from a cultural perspective as opposed yeah. from a national perspective. And uh, being there, uh, some of the Belizeans are like, oh, yeah, no, I go to Bluefields. I can't tell the difference. It's yeah. exactly Belize to them. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's a really interesting perspective on that that I would never have. Uh, I mean, I knew, like, I know the English. I know the construction is similar. I know the Caribbean is similar. Um, but uh, that they actually feel that it's so similar that they see that as, as yeah. just an affinity yeah. is, is surprising, so. Yeah, when, when like we have maybe nine or 10 staff here and mm -hmm. we've, we've had people from different areas of the country here, you know, and, and as you get the relationship going with them, you see that they, the different areas of the country see the world differently. Oh, for sure. I, I never mentioned this, but my oldest boy is 24 uh -huh. and he, he's a heavy duty mechanic with finning in the, in, the, in the Arctic at a diamond mine. Oh, wow. And he also in the oil sands. He works two weeks on, two weeks off. In the two-week-off period, 
he has a van, and a year and a half ago, he left Vancouver in this 1995 Chevy Astro van with a bed and stuff in it, and he spends two weeks out of every four weeks driving from here to Argentina. So his, his van is in Lyon right now. And so he flies down, grabs the van, and drives a little bit more, and then fly. Okay. He's been doing okay. it for a year and a half. Wow. So he goes back to Canada, uh, works two weeks, really hard, right. and then comes back and leaves his car at the parking lot at the airport, gets back in a car, and drives for another two weeks. So he's gone from <laughs> Vancouver, San Diego, Mexico, all over the place, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras. I actually met him in uh, El Salvador last week, uh -huh. and we drove around for a while. He'll be back in a few days, and then he's heading off to Panama. So he has incredible experience. I, she, uh, he's been I bet. for uh, about all these different cultures because he's been just zigzagging all over right. South America. Wow, it's, it's, that's yeah. But that that's a project. Th th that that inspiration came from me being here. Right, obviously. From him yeah. bringing him down here when he was seven, <laughs> and his brothers and everything, and coming down here and seeing people with like absolutely nothing, like absolutely no possessions playing with a pig in the mud, in their underwear, with nothing, and just watching this since he's been young, he's young, right? Uh -huh. this comes from, the inspiration came from Lyon, right? And so, uh, and it's just a legacy that's come from, from being here, which is really, really good if you're in America or Europe or anywhere to come and experience this with your children because boy, oh boy, they go back and they just like, I don't need all this stuff to be happy. Yeah. I don't need a Mercedes and all this, all this stuff. I, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I think my kids were three and six when we first moved here. And so they've been, yeah, since they were very little. Yeah, it's been, so uh, good for them, right? Yeah, oh yeah, and they love it. Yeah. They're very happy here, yeah. which has been. Yeah. And yeah. even when like, they step in and they step out of the North American world and they step into this and they go back and forth, they come back and they're just, they, they mature so quickly and they become worldly and they, and they become uh, like, they're, you know, they become yeah. centered and, Absolutely. It's really, really good for your kids. Cool. All right. Okay, well, thanks to Jeff for doing that interview and giving us the opportunity to come out here and see one of the houses on the inside and to walk around the property. And we, we've gotten permission to come back in the future. And, and really, so we ran out of time because we, we got to get out to a birthday event today but uh, we can come back and do some filming. It is a bit to get out here, so it's something we gotta arrange. We can't just run out anytime, but uh, we're looking forward to coming out and doing some um, like outdoor activity stuff in the area uh, and exploring a little bit. That's gonna be really cool. And, uh, and hopefully we'll get to check out some of the other homes, show some of that. And if you guys have any questions uh, for me or for Jeff, go ahead and get those in the comments. That would be great. Uh, we'll do our best to get whatever information to you. As always, I'm not a real estate agent. I don't represent these properties in any way. I don't get any commission. If you wanna reach out to him or whatever, that you don't have to come through me. You don't have to let me know. You don't have to tell him that I sent you anything like that. Uh, just, you know, if this is something you're interested in for Airbnb, we just wanna show you these things as we always do. We want you to know what's out there. We want you to know what real prices are, what real options are, what different parts of the country look like. We love coming out and seeing the country and getting involved. Of course, for us, it is loads of fun just to see what all there is. I'm gonna turn around a little bit because we got some cool trees and stuff in the houses here behind me. And it's very sunny. We're very warm right now, but uh, it's been, it's been a cool day. So special thanks to Jeff and Erlon who made this possible and John who set it all up. He's been trying to get at me out here for at least six months. He's been calling Saeed who I do. This is Nicaragua with and trying to convince him to, to pressure me to come out. Um, and I've really not been avoiding it. I've just been really busy. This is the pool where we did the interview. And it's just, it takes me forever to get things on my schedule. I'm always off doing something. So. Thank you so much for joining me. Like and subscribe if you have the opportunity and are interested in supporting the channel. It'd be great if you went to buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller, link everywhere. Uh, and that donation comes directly to me and helps make this channel possible and makes it that we're able to come out and do things like this that take a whole morning to come out and just get some footage. And uh, of course, share on social media, tell someone about the show, that would be much appreciated. And uh, I'm gonna see all of you tomorrow. And of course, four episodes pop up on the screen. It would be awesome if you clicked on one of those. You don't have to know why, trust me, it just, it helps.